Welcome to the Waste Management and Recycling Opportunities in Saudi Arabia webinar. Um, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a bit of a take two. Uh, for those of you that turned up uh, two weeks ago, we had a really big technical issue with WebEx. For that, we um, humbly apologise. It was a technical issue that we couldn't get around, so we felt it was best to move it to today. So we hope that uh, that you're available uh, throughout this next hour to listen to some of the uh, interesting things that are coming up. Uh, just some housekeeping uh, issues. This session will be recorded uh, today and the session will be available uh, post this particular webinar in the event that you want to share that with people. Um, today's session, uh, we've obviously got the opening, um, we've got a welcome address, which I'll uh, welcome our ambassador in a minute. Uh, then we've got Mr. Yazid al Hadban, who is with Mawan, who's uh, our special guest today to talk about the waste management recycling uh, opportunities here in Saudi Arabia. Then we'll go through a bit of Q&A. We'll talk a little bit about Austrade, um, a bit of quick update on Saudi Arabia itself. And then uh, Mossen, who's uh, one of our amazing team here in Riyadh, will give a bit of closing remarks. Um, also, for questions, for Q&A, uh, we've got um, Slido. For those that uh, use that, if you're on your laptop, you can go to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, and the event code is hashtag Saudi Webinar. Um, so you can either download the app on your phone, on your device, or you can do it on your laptop. And so we welcome questions along the way. All questions are good questions. Um, there we go. So um, it's really exciting. Just a quick opener. So um, the waste management recycling is yet another amazing sector here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, in my time here as Trade Investment Commissioner, um, it is all encompassing. It is a colossal market. We'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the webinar. But um, waste management recycling is a big opportunity. Australia is certainly has a lot of experience in this area, so today's really exciting. Um, but first, I'd like to hand over to um, the Australian Ambassador to Saudi Arabia, uh, His Excellency Mark Donovan, to say a few words to open it. Your Excellency. G'day. Um, thanks, Todd. And salam alaikum to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to talk uh, to you about yet another sector uh, as Todd has said, where there is a huge amount of opportunity, but also a huge amount that is happening. I've been here for coming up to two and a half years now. And in my first few months, I attended uh, the launch by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of the Saudi Green Initiative and the Middle East Green Initiatives. These were an articulation of Saudi Arabia's vision for its climate policies, its environment policies. They're extremely ambitious, as is everything here in the kingdom. Um, but what they very clearly indicated to me is that around the same time that we had a new government in Australia that was articulating the same types of policies, uh, the Saudis were doing so as well. And whilst the Saudis are arguably starting from a lower base, their targets and ambitions are not that different and not too far behind our own. The similarities and synergies are quite remarkable. Um, there's elements about greening Saudi Arabia. Um, there are proposals uh, for nature reserves, both on land and in the marine environment. Um, there are proposals and plans underway to better care for heritage sites. But also they're interested in a lot of the same things as us, uh, more efficient use of electricity grids. How do you harvest um, rare earth metals, um, critical minerals from both uh, mining, but also from recycling? Uh, it's one of the many things that strikes me that we are uh, a lot more alike in what it is that we are looking for. That's a bit of the big picture context. Um, that fits in with the broader Vision 2030 transformation of Saudi Arabia that is designed in part to shift the economy away from its reliance on carbon-based uh, trading, uh, that is the export of, of oil, basically, but also LNG. Um, Vision 2030, the economic plank, is about stimulating economic diversification 
and encouraging a diverse, uh, vibrant uh, private sector, which, again, starting from a low base, but we're seeing a lot of promise here. So when it comes to um, waste, waste management, waste policy, recycling, um, I've visited a couple of times CERP, which is one of the organisations here that looks at recycling, and again, a huge amount of ambition. Moss has given me a few figures, um, and what surprises me is that Australian waste per capita is not that far behind Saudi Arabia. We're looking at about 2.95 tonnes per person. Um, the Saudi is around 3.15 tonnes per person. Where there is a big difference, though, is what is being recovered in each country. In Australia, we're managing to recover quite a bit. The figures are high, but could be higher, and I don't think I need to run through those with this audience. But the recovery rate in Saudi Arabia is about 5%. Uh, that demonstrates to me that there's a huge amount of potential. Um, what also surprises me very much is that food waste in Australia is much higher than it is in Saudi Arabia, almost double. What we're seeing here is the very early stages of what we saw about 30 years ago um, in Sydney. Um, and that is the rolling out of um, segregated bins uh, for recycling. And it's only in small areas at this stage. So, for example, if I go across the road where there's a government office for a program called the Quality of Life, they've got the, um, the, the multi hauled bins, the, the coloured bins. But you don't see that in a lot of areas. So they really are at an early stage. And I'm hoping that today... Um, what you will hear will put some flesh, some detail around those the observations that I've just made. But in a nutshell, hugely ambitious country, um, creating a predictable regulatory environment for businesses, stimulating a dynamic private sector, and with a genuine will for good climate change policies and environmental policies to be implemented. And on that, I'll hand it back to Todd. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, so um, on those comments, I'll hand over now to our special guest, uh, Yazid al Hadban, who is uh, the Investment and Business Development uh, Manager at Mawan, which is the National Centre for Waste Management. So Yazid, uh, it's an honour to have you here, my friend, and we look forward to uh, hearing all about all the opportunities here in the kingdom. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Yazid Rabdan, and I represent the uh, uh, investment and business development here um, in the National Centre for Waste Management. First of all, I would like to thank you to be, uh, for giving us this chance to, uh, to be with you here today. Um, today, I would like to take you through um, a little of a journey uh, or a transformation journey um, here in Saudi Arabia, um, uh, within the uh, waste management uh, sector, um, we will talk a little bit about uh, some of the numbers that we have right now, what are the uh, uh, elements of the uh, national waste management strategy, as well as uh, the master planning for the kingdom, uh, types of waste that we are targeting, as well as uh, some of the business opportunities that are um, uh, published right now, and hopefully that uh, more, more, uh, more to come, inshallah. So at first, uh, uh, linking back to uh, Vision 2030. So Vision 2030 has a lot of commitments and national commitments around the waste management, um, either by achieving environmental sustainability or by establishing a comprehensive recycling or comprehensive recycling projects, as well as increasing the efficiency of, uh, of waste management within the kingdom. Also, when we talk about the National Transformation Program, the NTP, um, the NTP actually outlines a lot of initiatives. Um, some of them actually aims uh, to enhance KSA's uh, waste management system by developing the policies and guidelines for the uh, waste management sector uh, as a whole, as well as reducing food loss uh, and waste. So. Uh, at first, uh, next please. Uh, at first, we will talk a little bit about the initiation of the uh, center itself. 
So uh, the center actually, or before before the start of the center, there was an establishment of an interministerial committee from eight different uh, government entities, such as uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Industry, Ministry of uh, Environment, Water and Agriculture, uh, Ministry of Health, along with, with several other uh, government uh, entities. Uh, that was in 2018. This committee uh, was was actually uh, established to uh, to look over and study the waste management sector as a whole uh, in the kingdom, and it was meant to analyze the current state and also develop some recommendations for the sector as a whole. Uh, next, please. So the um, the uh, the committee um, actually um, uh, did a, a very big and comprehensive study of the legal and regulatory framework here in Saudi Arabia, as well as a comparison benchmark with uh, with the, some of the international best practices, um, as well as looking for new treatment options, um, strategic and uh, uh, strategic directions, as well as targets of the sector itself. Uh, they came up with uh, two main recommendations. One is actually to reshape the institutional framework to govern the waste management sector uh, in the kingdom, as well as establishing of, 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 um, of a national center uh, to regulate all waste except uh, radioactive and military waste. With that, the center actually started its operation in uh, January 2021 um, with uh, six main uh, mandates. Uh, next, please. Um, those main mandates uh, start uh, with uh, the legislation and guidelines. So the the, the center is actually uh, or supposed to be proposing a waste management law uh, and it's following uh, regulations and guidelines for all different activities, as well as planning and developing uh, the the technical standards, the requirements for the entire value chain of the. Uh, of the waste management sector here in Saudi Arabia, as well as looking for financial sustainability and adopting circular economy. Um, also, the center is responsible on licensing and permitting both uh, waste management activities and waste management technologies. With focusing also on digitalization uh, uh, and uh, and data, as well as awareness and capacity building. So. Uh, at first, there was a reshape of the institutional framework uh, within the uh, the country. Uh, next, please. Uh, within the the uh, the new institutional framework, we start with the policy maker, which is MIWA, Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture, and then the sector regulator, which is the National Center for Waste Management, MOAN. Uh, MOAN is actually an abbreviation uh, in Arabic, Al Markaz Al Watani Li Idarat Al Nifayat. Uh, so this is just an, a side note. Uh, this is why we call it uh, MOAN. Um, also, uh, when we talk about the development and supervisory authorities, um, for example, uh, Ministry of Health in regards to the um, healthcare waste or medical waste, uh, uh, Ministry of Industries for industrial waste, both hazardous and unhazardous, as well as the the the, um, the last layer, which is private and third sector uh, of MPOs of service providers. Uh, next, please. In regards of the uh, legislative framework for waste management sector uh, in the country, uh, the center actually produced the waste management law, uh, uh, and it was approved by the royal decree uh, about uh, uh, ten months after the uh, actually nine to ten months after the uh, the center started its own operation. That was followed by the uh, the waste implementing regulation. Can, may you go back, please, to slide number seven? Yes, thank you. Um, also followed by the waste implementing regulations, as well as the guidelines for the executive regulations for the waste management system uh, within the country itself. Um, with that, we know uh, next piece. With that, we know uh, the types of waste that we are targeting here in Saudi Arabia. Um, first, we will uh, uh, describe those uh, those seven different uh, types of waste, which uh, which actually cascade into eleven different types of waste. Starting with healthcare and industrial waste, both ways hazardous and non-hazardous, as well as the uh, construction demolition waste, municipal solid waste, agricultural waste, sewage sludge, and uh, um, also uh, the special waste, which includes end-of-life tires, end-of-life vehicles, along with e-waste, which is uh, electronics and uh, batteries. Uh, next, please. Um, we'd like to give you. Uh, 
would like to give you a little look on waste generation here in Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, this is, I mean, uh, our generic study that we, the center uh, has done uh, when it started uh, its own operations. So uh, we can see that uh, in 2020 and 2021, we are generating around 111 million tons per year um, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the different types of waste uh, that we just mentioned. Uh, and we are speculating that this uh, waste generation will go up uh, until 2035 uh, to reach around 150 million tons uh, per year. The very important number here that we, uh, we would like to highlight is actually the number you can see uh, below, which is the current overall landfill diversion, uh, which is actually 5%. Uh, 5% is a very low number. Uh, but with this low number comes a lot of different opportunities and uh, to, to improve the waste management sector. Uh, next, please. So uh, the center started the, the, uh, the strategic framework uh, with, the, uh, with the national waste management strategy that focuses on the ambitions, strategic objectives, directions, required enablers for the, for the whole sector as, uh, as the waste management sector. Uh, uh, as well as uh, the KPIs and some initiatives, uh, also by defining geographical clustering and then uh, creating or, or building master plans for each cluster, and that gives uh, birth to uh, investment opportunities or business opportunities in the kingdom. Um, next, please. Uh, also next, uh, so the uh, the strategy actually uh, uh, includes or consists of six main components: the vision itself. Five different ambitions, 11 strategic objectives, 21 strategic directions, 19 major KPIs, and 65 initiatives in between core and enabling uh, initiatives. Um, uh, we will focus a little bit on, on the major KPIs that we have uh, or, or targets uh, and trajectories uh, for the next few years. Uh, next, please. So um, by adopting circular economy principles and by uh, looking back to the number that we have focused on, which is the 5% of landfill diversion, we have uh, set uh, targets with three different trajectories for all waste streams, um, 2030, 2035, and 2040, with hopes of an impact in 2040 of 90% of overall landfill diversion, along with 1.2 billion tons uh, of waste being treated, uh, also, we speculate uh, that we uh, we will have around 400 billion Saudi riyals of uh, of value of private sector opportunities uh, within the uh, waste uh, sector and the value chain as a whole. Along with, uh, we know that we uh, we require around 850 treatment uh, facilities that we uh, that we require uh, within uh, until 2014. Uh, this is in regard to the strategy and the KPIs and the goals. Uh, next, I would like to talk about, uh, next please, I would like to talk about the, defining the geographical clustering as well as uh, building the master plans for, um, for each cluster. Um, so uh, we have defined uh, 25 uh, geographical clusters within the kingdom, as you can see on the left side. Each and every uh, geographical cluster, um, we will build, uh, or actually we uh, some of it we already developed uh, master plans for, and some of it are under development, and along with, with some other uh, clusters that will be developed uh, within the next few uh, quarters. Um, excluding uh, number 22, 23, and 24, which are New York, um, Umruj, which is Red Sea, and, uh, as well as uh, Al Ula cluster. Those three different um, uh, clusters, uh, they will build their own master plans, but they will uh, they are aligning with the center uh, on the on the same uh, targets and KPIs and uh, main uh, main initiatives and goals. Um, also, a little bit uh, on on how do we create the master plan? Uh, next, please. Um, and and what do we do within the master plans themselves? As you can see on the upper side, uh, one uh, step one through step four. Uh, this is actually done once on a national level. Uh, we do identify the geographical clustering for the kingdom itself, define the regions um, uh, that, that we will uh, uh, adopt the, the, uh, the, the clustering on, as well as defining the strategic objectives and targets, conducting benchmarking, and as well as conducting uh, technology uh, appraisal. When we go down to uh, step five through step 10, this is done actually on each and every uh, master plan. So hence uh, on all the uh, geographical clusters. 
uh, we conduct baseline for um, for 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 all clusters uh, for for actually for the um, for for uh, for each and every cluster as well as uh, conducting gap analysis identify uh, scenarios and then treatment scenarios then we conduct uh, multi criteria analysis and select the proper scenario for each uh, waste stream in each cluster then we detail the master plan um, and at the end we have we get the uh, uh, number of uh, of infrastructure that will be needed uh, for each and every uh, waste stream in, in the cluster itself and then that cascades into or actually bundles into different business opportunities um, next please so, uh, just to highlight on the implementation of master plans, um, we have uh, wave one through wave three, which are uh, wave uh, uh, Riyadh or Riyadh cluster, Jeddah cluster, and Mecca cluster. Those three uh, master plans are already developed and uh, already uh, 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 produced uh, uh, some investment opportunities or business opportunities uh, across the waste streams and the value chain. Um, we will talk about this um, uh, in a little bit of a detail later on. Um, wave four through wave six, which are the Mam, Medina, Al Qasim, Hayal, and Yambur, are under development right now. Um, also, we are targeting uh, wave seven through wave eleven, hopefully in the next few quarters. Um, next, please. So, um, uh, after defining the, uh, the, the number of, of infrastructure needed and uh, uh, after doing the baseline and identifying the scenarios and uh, doing the financial models and others and, and uh, some other elements and criteria, uh, we, uh, we bundle some investment or business opportunities for each and every cluster. Uh, we will take a little bit of uh, of an example today on on the three main uh, or the three clusters that are produced. We will just highlight them um, in a in a quick way. So we will start with um, <clears throat> with Riyadh cluster, which actually uh, covers eight different governments. Just to highlight, when we say Riyadh cluster or Mecca cluster or Jeddah cluster, uh, we do not mean specifically Riyadh city itself, nor the Riyadh region as a whole. Uh, we, we specify and choose those governments um, uh, based on some criteria uh, due to the population, waste generation, along with, with, with different elements. So um, uh, when we talk about uh, Riyadh cluster, Riyadh cluster actually covers eight different governments. Uh, Riyadh city is actually one of them, uh, along with Rumah, Remla, Rumah, uh, and, and other uh, governments. This cluster actually covers about around 60,000 square kilometers of cluster area. It has around 7 million uh, uh, pop uh, of population, uh, as well as 2,800 uh, uh, different uh, industrial spots and around 1,800 uh, square kilometer of agricultural area. Uh, this cluster actually produced 27 investment opportunities uh, that worth around 80 billion Saudi riyals. Uh, we will take a look at the uh, some of the infrastructure uh, that is needed uh, within Riyadh cluster. Uh, next, please. So, so we know that we uh, we need more than 80 different waste management facilities and infrastructure within Riyadh cluster. Um, uh, the the total waste generated in, in Riyadh itself is around 25.8 uh, million tons annually. Um, those uh, those facilities you can see on the left side uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, goes around composting, waste to energy, material recovery facilities, as well as transfer stations. And you can see the details on the left side. The target for the uh, Riyadh cluster is actually 91% landfill diversion. 7% of this 91% will go through waste to energy and refuse derived fuel. And 84% will go through recycling and composting. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, we will talk about the uh, uh, Jeddah cluster, which covers four different governments, uh, has around 4.9 million uh, of population, and uh, as mentioned, covers around four different governments, which are Jeddah, Rabakh, Laysar, Kamil, as well as uh, King Abdullah Economic uh, uh, City uh, near Jeddah. Uh, this cluster actually produced 31 different uh, business opportunities that were around 50 uh, billion Saudi riyals. And this cluster um, actually um, uh, needs or, or, or uh, 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 requires, uh, next please, 
requires uh, uh, around four, 40 different uh, waste management facilities as, uh, as this uh, cluster actually produces around 14.8 million tons annually. Um, again, the same uh, approach for Riyadh cluster. Um, uh, the main numbers are actually uh, we are targeting for the cluster is 92% uh, landfill diversion, 14% will go through the waste to energy um, uh, cycle, um, and 78% will go through uh, recycling and composting. The last cluster we would like to highlight today is actually Mecca cluster. Um, next, please. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, Mecca cluster uh, actually uh, covers three different governments. Mecca cluster is, is, is very important uh, to the country, uh, uh, especially uh, when we talk about the Hajj and Umrah seasons. Um, uh, and personally, I was in, 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 uh, in Mecca throughout uh, the last Hajj season, and I saw the need of, uh, of, of, uh, of changes within the, this cluster, especially. Uh, to improve the, uh, uh, the, the, the waste management cycle uh, uh, and, and, and to, to achieve the circular economy within this cluster itself. So this cluster actually covers three different governments, al Jumur, Mecca, and Bahra. Um, and um, it covers around 700 or 800 square kilometers of agricultural areas. 20 different business opportunities are produced from this um, uh, cluster that worth around 31 uh, uh, billion Saudi riyal. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> so, um, uh, again, uh, this, this actually, this uh, cluster uh, uh, requires uh, around 40 different waste management facilities throughout, again, composting, waste to energy, transfer stations, and also uh, material recovery uh, facilities. Uh, next, please. Um, here, I would like to highlight uh, a little bit of the analytical framework. So when we, when we, when we talk about, or when we, when we previously mentioned uh, building the master plan, uh, we, we, we basically come up with the analytical framework for the whole value chain. Uh, and from that, we know how many uh, infrastructure and business opportunities uh, to be bundled within the cluster. This is actually just a, a little bit of a template on Mecca master plan. We can see uh, the, uh, the, the whole value chain for uh, this cluster um, as a whole, and also some of the uh, facilities and treatment facilities that we, uh, we require uh, within this cluster. Uh, next, please. The last thing I would like to talk about, and coming back to the different, the seven different uh, waste streams, uh, one of the most important uh, waste streams uh, we have currently uh, is, is actually construction demolition waste. Um, and it comes more, uh, more, more and more important due to the mega and giga projects that are happening here in Saudi Arabia um, and changes throughout the Vision 2030. Um, so uh, we actually uh, produced uh, the construction demolition waste uh, for the whole um, uh, for, for the whole 25 different clusters uh, as one project or what, as one group uh, and uh, one bundle. Uh, it is actually actually produced, published, um, uh, uh, published for public. Actually, uh, people and companies can see it and can see the uh, and actually can uh, hopefully in the near future can apply on it. Um, those um, this stream actually produced around 72 investment opportunities with um, around 81 different facilities that are needed uh, until the second trajectory, which is 2035. And uh, we uh, we speculate again that uh, we will treat around 30. 4 million tons uh, by 2035. Um, next, please. So uh, this is what I have today. Um, uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, hopefully uh, this presentation was uh, insightful, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed uh, uh, preparing it. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Siazid, for that very uh, comprehensive presentation. Um, you'd be pleased to know, and I'm really impressed with all the people that are online today, that we've got um, quite a number of questions. Uh, in fact, about 18 questions all up. Uh, I know 14 questions all up. So that's really, really good. Um, so the, the quality of your presentation, um, I'd love it when we when there's lots of questions to be asked because it's a lot of inquisitive nature. So thank you, Mr. Yazid. Um, 
I guess before we head into the, uh, the that slide there on why Saudi Arabia, we might head through some Q and A because we do have quite a number of questions uh, on for you, Mr. Yazid. So um, I will take through some of these. Um, so uh, this is a question: uh, How will Mawan balance its regulatory and licensing obligations? with providing an innovation framework for industry participants to experiment with new technologies? That's a very good question. Um, uh, if you allow me, yes, um, uh, this is a very nice question. So uh, while building the, the regulatory framework and also the legal framework uh, uh, for, for the waste management sector here in Saudi Arabia, we also focused uh, and also uh, while, uh, while working on, on, on the master plan and, and doing uh, technology appraisals and, and benchmarking and, and looking for best practices, uh, there is actually a little bit of a balance between the technologies uh, uh, the technologies used uh, and the technologies we actually recommend uh, for each and every uh, stream and for each and every step within the value chain. But we actually um, have, uh, so so uh, coming back to the mandate itself, uh, one of the mandates is actually uh, permitting and licensing the technologies here in Saudi Arabia. So uh, we also uh, um, accept uh, some of the uh, researches and and uh, and, um, and new technologies to be looked at uh, throughout uh, our internal units and departments. And if it um, uh, mainly if it if it uh, fits the 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 final um, uh, goals that we are trying to achieve by reducing waste and and uh, and achieving uh, the targets of landfill diversion, then that will be uh, studied and hopefully uh, we'll give the thumbs up for the for this different technologies and, and researches. Yeah, thank you, Yazid. That's a good answer. I think uh, certainly in my time here in the kingdom, um, one of the things you find about the Saudi Arabian uh, businesses, government entities, they are all very welcoming and very open to new technologies. That's why we're doing these things and these webinars as well. Uh, so thanks for that. Um, the next question um, from Salvatore is, uh, good morning. Are there any investment initiatives from Saudi Arabia for unique green recycling intellectual property? Or is Mawan purely looking at inbound investment or, you know, in this case, Australian companies coming into Saudi Arabia? Is there anything in the strategy around investing in technologies in other countries? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, catch the, the first part of the question, but if I may answer... Uh, sorry, is it? Second part. Uh, so, so uh, when, when we talk about the uh, investing in different technologies uh, around the the, uh, the kingdom, uh, we are actually working on on within the appraisals themselves uh, to to uh, uh, to look for different uh, uh, technologies, and we also uh, have a lot of support to go out and 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 actually uh, look for best practices. Uh, and personally, I, I had the chance to do that. Uh, however, um, uh, when we talk about investing in, in, into different technologies uh, within the uh, the, uh, uh, the center strategy, um, I might say that this is not something that we are looking for right now, as uh, because the the center is, is is a pure regulator of the of the sector. Uh, but I guess that. Uh, so, um, when we talk about the development and supervisory authorities, as well as some of the uh, companies that would like to invest here in Saudi Arabia, might uh, might as well look for uh, some new technologies in uh, within the waste management sector. Yeah. Uh, just to add to Yazid's comments, uh, Salvatore and ladies and gentlemen, um, certainly in our experience, if you are looking at investment. Um, you know, in this case from Saudi Arabia into your business or into that area. Uh, Mossen, who's uh, doing the closing remarks, is our investment lead. Uh, look, there are many areas for that. So it's probably uh, in terms of the government area, so the public investment fund, uh, people like SALIC and a number of other entities, government entities, um, they're really at the, uh, at the really big end of town. So we're talking like half a billion and above type ticket in terms of investment. If it's more in what, what we might call a more intimate set of investments, um, certainly have a chat with us offline, particularly with Mossen. Um, there are many areas we've seen it where, you know, companies are doing joint ventures in Saudi Arabia, 
where you're kind of investing together uh, at both ends, where you're working both from a Saudi perspective to help, in this case, waste management, but also then the invest the Saudi partner, whether it be a private company, investing back into your business and your IP. We see that a lot across all sectors. Um, thank you. So uh, next question, Yazid, we'll just uh, work through them. Um, does uh, do Milan have, as a regulatory body, do you have a food waste management system in place or is there a strategy to have one for excess food waste from supermarkets to prevent food loss? Um, if so, uh, what is it? So uh, when we when we highlight the uh, uh, the the, uh, the organic waste or, or food waste uh, in specific, it is very important. Uh, as as His Excellency actually uh, 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 <clears throat> talked about, uh, we have we have um, uh, a lot of excess uh, waste throughout uh, the food industry. Uh, as a whole, um, we are actually uh, uh, focusing on 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 uh, on the organic food on the, on the food waste and organic waste uh, as as uh, as a bulk uh, to reduce that. Um, uh, first, by 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 uh, by working on um, on uh, on on minimizing uh, or actually sorry, uh, work on 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 source segregation uh, within uh, within. Uh, uh, within the uh, uh, let's say the the, the the bin system or the collection at first, so we are actually trying to tran uh, to do the transition from a one bin system to a three bin system. This will help us uh, as much as uh, for for collection uh, purposes and also for uh, for source segregation. Um, but when we talk about uh, reducing the uh, the food waste uh, as as uh, uh, as a um, uh, as an initiative or or, or as as a strategic uh, overview, um, we are actually working with with some with a lot of initiatives to to reduce the waste. Uh, as as one of the main mandates also for the for the center is is actually awareness, uh, and this is this is very hard uh, due to uh, the raw sector. Uh, due to the waste management sector uh, being a raw sector here in Saudi Arabia, um, hopefully uh, we will achieve uh, those targets to reduce this waste uh, in the near future, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Yazid. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the retail chains here, what you'll find too in the kingdom is um, hospitality, the restaurant scene, it has exploded at a rate of knots. I think every week now there's somewhere between eight and 12, 15 new restaurants and coffee shops and things opening. So, you know, it's a really good question. It's a really timely question around food waste, not just from supermarkets, but also from hospitality, hotels. Um, it is it is growing at a rate of knots. It's a really good question and something that Mawan and Cirque, um, Mawan being the regulatory body, yes, certainly looking at that. Um, there are some really interesting uh, issues here, um, Yazid. Um, what are the rules and regulations around uh, tyre recycling, as in motor vehicle and truck tyre recycling? Is that part of the strategy? So uh, yes, it is. It is actually a part of the strategy. The uh, the centre focuses on on the tyre um, uh, stream or waste stream, which we which is actually uh, cascaded under the and uh, special waste, which is end of life tyres. We are actually uh, some of the opportunities that we are building right now are uh, focusing on end of life tires, um, uh, either recovery facility or, or um, a treatment facility. Uh, main uh, main technology is uh, is, is shredding, and uh, with hopes of of, uh, of an offtake that will be uh, used in in a lot of different uh, uh, streams and, in, and industries here in the country. Uh, but okay. when we talk about the, the rules and regulations, yes, it is. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, take a look at the waste management law and regulations around each and every uh, waste stream. Uh, this is actually uh, produced and shared to the public, and you can actually uh, visit throughout the uh, um, the center's uh, website, which has all the laws and regulations in regards to all waste streams, not specifically to the uh, end of life tires. Thank you, Yazid. Um, another interesting question, kind of aligns Australia and Saudi Arabia a bit. 
Um, how does uh, weather, or extreme weather conditions, particularly in the case of high temperatures in Saudi Arabia, affect uh, waste initiatives? That must be an interesting consideration, Yazid, for Mawan. Yeah, it is. It is actually an interesting uh, uh, topic. Uh, uh, along along the studies and uh, while building the the, uh, the strategy itself, um, uh, we have uh, identified uh, the weather as as an aspect. But high temperature, uh, along with with uh, with our studies, uh, high temperature um, uh, will be only or, or we identified it uh, uh, to be uh, to be a hurdle within within the collection itself, especially for organic waste. Uh, when we talk about food and and uh, and organic waste, which might actually uh, turn into something that that no one wants, uh, the uh, we have highlighted the speed of collection. Uh, throughout the organic waste uh, uh, in regards to the high temperature here in the country. Uh, but we, we ra rather than that, in, in, when we talk in other specific ways, there was no uh, highlight uh, around the high temperature rather than uh, what we just mentioned, which is the high temperature affecting the collection uh, organic waste. So we have to uh, be very uh, hasty and, and very fast in, 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 in the collection, uh, or actually when we talk about the value chain in the collection of the organic waste itself, so it does not dissolve and, and turn into something that we don't want and something that we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot take advantage of. Yeah, thanks, Yazid. Certainly, um... Where we live um, here in Riyadh, um, the bins and the waste is picked up every day. So particularly through summer, it's picked up every day and has moved through. Um, uh, a question from Hani: Are the quantities of 3.1 tonnes per person per year, is that all domestic organic waste that goes to the land, now into landfill, or does that include all types of waste per person? It must have come from your presentation. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so so uh, when we talk about the the numbers, uh, so so uh, if if I if I understand correctly, uh, the question is around the one oh seven and one eleven million tons of waste, right? That is generated yes. on a yearly basis. Yeah, so this includes the seven different waste streams, excluding wow. military waste and uh, nuclear or uh, uh, nuclear waste. Yes. So it includes the whole uh, seven main waste streams, eleven sub streams. Okay, so it's a look at per capita uh, measure. Okay, um, uh, interesting question uh, to Mr. Yazid. Uh, what, if any, financial incentives does Miwan offer for potential investors coming into or technologies coming into Saudi Arabia? So, um, as a regulator, uh, the center uh, does not actually work on, on, on financial incentives. However, uh, we are working on, so we have identified certain enablers for the sector, as I mentioned within the uh, National Waste Management Strategy. Uh, some, of that, some of them are related, are, are related to the uh, polluter-based principle, uh, EPR scheme, uh, as well as uh, identifying gate fees and and the whole dynamic of uh, of the uh, uh, let's see the balancing of of the uh, uh, financial model of the waste management because as we know the waste management sector is not a very profitable or or, or a very high revenue uh, uh, stream so we are also working on on, on other initiatives with higher uh, uh, management or higher decrease in the in the country. Uh, to, to identify um, uh, some type of of, uh, of a balancing entity or, um, I mean, it, ha it has a lot of different schemes. I cannot disclose it right now, but hopefully uh, this will see the light in the near future, but it's one of the main enablers that we have identified uh, to the uh, Saudi government in, in, in regards of the financial uh, incentives. Beautiful. Thank you, Yazid. Um, I'll go through a couple, two, maybe two or three more. Um, it is really good, all these questions. What we might do afterwards, pretty is get a list of these questions, Yazid, um, and maybe we'll get some answers back. But um, uh, there's a couple more here. Um, uh, hi, this is from Alex. Has the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia established a framework for the implementation of a waste levy to drive a diversion away from landfill? Or is that uh, in part you, of his thinking? May, may you please uh, repeat the one part? I did not hear the, the middle part of the question. Sorry. So, hi, has the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia 
established a framework for the implementation of a waste levy to drive diversion from landfill? Um, when, um, to be to be honest and and and, and specifically, uh, we we have a lot of different uh, uh, ways and and uh, throughout the value chain to to uh, to to divert from landfill uh, using a lot of different technologies and and by adopting the circular economy itself, we are trying our best to uh, to divert from landfill. Uh, but I hope uh, that this question uh, is actually uh, sent to me. Uh, I will uh, look back into uh, the the uh, the specific question uh, or the specific part of that question uh, with uh, with some of, uh, of our colleagues here in the center. And I, hopefully I will yes. get back with uh, with a short and straight answer, inshallah. Shala, thank you. Um, uh, another interesting question. So, is there a tendering? So, is there a procurement or a tendering process that allows for Australian businesses to tender for work relating to recycling in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Okay, so this is this is a very interesting question and uh, uh, very nice to be raised right now. So. Uh, we are working now uh, on on a new project to to, uh, to finalize and identify the type of let's call it a contractual model uh, to to basically give this opportunity to uh, to to an investor. Um, if I may just um, uh, highlight something, uh, all the different opportunities that are published right now and shown right now, uh, you can actually access it through the Invest Saudi portal for now. Uh, uh, hopefully, it will be uh, in in, uh, in different portals in the in the future. Uh, each and every opportunity has its own card that has its own investment highlights, as well as the demand and supply, and a lot of different. Basically, a kind of a pre feasibility study that will help investor to uh, uh, to to at least uh, have an idea on the on the project itself. This is one part. So the portal is Invest Saudi or in Arabic, Statmir for Saudi. Um, uh, all, all different opportunities throughout the waste streams and throughout the value chains are there. Uh, coming back to the contractual model itself, so uh, we have identified three main different uh, contractual models. Uh, going back to the uh, the the, uh, the laws of the country right now, uh, we have the. Uh, uh, PVP or the uh, private public partnerships, along with the uh, some of the opportunities will be uh, hopefully direct licensing and some uh, will be tendering um, throughout uh, an RFP. Hopefully, we are still studying those types of contractual model to make things easier for each and every investor throughout his journey. Um, hopefully, we will finalize this um, uh, this specific contractual model and how we can float or, 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 or basically give this opportunity to an investor before the end of the year, inshallah. So within the next month, inshallah. Uh, so we, are, we are in the final stages of, of defining the, uh, the proper contractual model. Uh, uh, we are now uh, receiving uh, uh, some, uh, let's say, letters of intentions for different uh, um, opportunities. We are keeping them and we are uh, starting to discuss um, uh, opportunities uh, with, with with different um, investors and hopefully with the Australian companies, um, but hopefully, inshallah, before the end of the year, we will have um, a proper or, or uh, uh, a specific and and clear uh, overview on the contractual models for each and every uh, uh, opportunity. Thank you, Yazid. Um... We might stop the Q&A session there. We've had a heap of questions, which is great. Um, uh, for those of you that have still got questions outstanding, happy for you to um, send those questions back through to Mossen, which we'll get to the end. Uh, Mossen, could you just go back to Yazid's last slide, the thank you slide? Just a, a couple of slides back, I think, or a slide back. Um, if you allow me, uh, this last slide. That's uh, this slide, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the barcode is actually for Mawan website. You can um, uh, access the uh, laws and regulations, the licensing uh, prerequisites, and a lot of different um, uh, things there. Uh, for sorry, it's still in Arabic. Uh, will be translated soon. But if anyone needs um, an English version of, of 
a specific type of regulation, uh, sorry, a specific type of, of a prerequisite for licensing, then um, I am more than happy to support in that until we finalize the, the translation officially uh, within the website. On the right side, you will find the, um, the uh, investment uh, email, uh, which is handled by uh, our department, me and my colleagues. Um, if you have any um, uh, any any question or anything that you need more information on, or if you are interested in in some of the opportunities, please let us know, uh, and we will be uh, directly um, uh, communicating with you, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Yassi. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Yassi, for today. Um, so yeah, so uh, just for everybody, that email address investment at one dot gov dot sa, um, and certainly with Mossen, um, he's got his contact us at the end of this presentation. Um, look, the reason for doing this particular webinar, um, Mawan and Sirk and a delegation uh, is planning to come to Australia uh, next year. At this stage, uh, not locked in yet, but somewhere around probably May, uh, kind of towards the middle of next year. We thought doing this webinar for all of all of us um, to understand the broader section of the waste management recycling opportunities here in the kingdom was really important to get the conversation started and we'd said to Mawan rather than wait until May next year and we set up a program which we'll do anyway um, and you start the conversations what we're hoping is that a number of you or if not all of you on this uh, particular webinar today ladies and gentlemen uh, would have had you know two or three conversations with Mawan and Surf and with Austrade uh, our team here um, prior to that trip so by the time Mawan land it'll be much more about confirming things, understanding the technologies rather than the starting point of the conversation. Today is the starting point with a view that we'd uh, get the line on that roadshow across Australia in towards the middle of next year. Um, I'll just if you want to head to the Wise Saturday Radio piece. So um, that's the kind of technical piece on waste management recycling today. Thank you, Yazid, uh, for, for all of your presentation today, I'm sure, and based on the amount of questions, uh, I think it was certainly um, well overdue and something that people see the opportunity. Um, just the last bit for me, um, the Why Saudi Arabia story. Um, uh, in my time here, which is coming up to a year and a half, um, what you'll find is it is a, a market that is the most dynamic uh, market in the world right now in terms of what's happening. Saudi Arabia is opening up to the world. Um, you'll see there the Saudi Mission 2030. A lot of you may have already read some of that. Um, we encourage you to read through the Vision 2030 document. It was launched in 2016 by His Excellency Mohammed bin Saud, who's the Crown Prince um, here. His Excellency, uh, what started out as a big, big vision is very much now rubber to the road. It is absolutely colossal here at the moment in every sector, every part of Saudi Arabia's uh, economy, culture, uh, every part of it is it's very profound changes. Even in my year and a half here, we've seen significant changes in lots of areas. Um, it is the most important and probably the most strategic opportunity in the Middle East from an export point of view for, for companies and investment into Saudi Arabia. This particular sector is, again, it's fascinating. We had a session about six weeks ago in the, procure, in the procurement space, another really interesting subsector within. Um, and so there's so many opportunities here. Um, there are probably now just on 38 million people here as a population in Saudi Arabia. 75% of the population are under the age of 35. The Crown Prince himself is 37. They are millennials. They are very much part of what's happening here. The young people, uh, I talked to a lot of Year 12 students who are actually wanting to study abroad with to the Y Australia program and education. Uh, those young people actually want to learn and come back to the kingdom and contribute and be part of what Vision 2030 is. It is quite astounding. Um, the last line there, Saudi Arabia is open for business. Um, the, one of the game changers for business was the e-visa. That was a game changer just on two years ago. Prior to that, it would have taken you maybe four or five months to get a visa to come in uh, with lots of sponsored groups and things like that. Now you can get an e-visa online in five minutes or on arrival at the airport. We recommend you do it online before you come. And if you're coming in to do business, it's well understood here that that's the case. Next slide, Mossum. Um, Austrade, how we can help you. Um, we've got an extensive network on shore, both with what we call a GEMS, our um, global engagement managers, and our Trade Start Network, of which a few are online today. Um, they're partnered with state governments and other entities around Australia to help you 
with your export kind of discussion. Um, we're here to help you with um, that facilitation piece between Mawan, between CERT, between potential partners, importers, distributors, all of that. Um, we also do a lot of work in education, as in educating you on what is happening here, not just in this initial, you know, yes, if you're in recycling, there are opportunities, but the cultural nuances of how to do business here, how to engage and do business here. One of the key things is fronting up face-to-face -face is critical. So um, I do say the story, you can't, if you're going to be, get into exporting, um, setting it in your calendar at 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon for an hour, it's probably not going to work. It's an all-encompassing, uh, dedicated lifestyle you've got to get into, and this market is no exception. Um, we do uh, trade show support. We often talk to companies around anchoring uh, your trips into the region around uh, around kind of trade shows and conferences. Riyadh here has become kind of conference central. Um, I think there's another three or four on this week. Um, the other week we had seven across sectors, seven different conferences on. Uh, the last bit is that we don't know what we don't know. So if you're out and you're, you're wanting to come into the region in the Middle East and Africa or specifically to Saudi Arabia, um, look, give us a call. Uh, Moss will give his details at the end. Uh, contact us through, um, through the Australian website. Again, even if you're coming in the region, um, just drop in and come and say good day to us. Um, quite often, it's just such a great learning experience to work with Australian companies. And nine times out of 10, every time Mossad and I meet with a company here or the team, we meet with a company, within a week or two, we're probably out somewhere meeting someone else and there's a connection, there's a potential connection there. So um, that's it from me. So thanks again to Yazid. And I'll hand over to um, our wonderful Mossad who leads our technology and investment space, uh, who's put this whole thing together. So thank you, Mossad. We'll hand to you for closing remarks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Todd. Um, well, this is uh, not really the closing remarks as such. It's uh, the beginning of the new road to collaborate on the um, waste management and recycling in Saudi Arabia and contribute to the Saudi ambitious journey. And we have heard uh, from Yazid tremendous amount of opportunities. And thank you, Todd. That's really uh, giving a brief of what we as a team here in Riyadh are set for. So we're we will be very happy to following this and to the question from Andrew on Slido. Uh, we will be very happy following this webinar to start the next steps. It's reach out, reach out to the uh, Yazid. Yazid has uh, set his uh, contact details for information about investments in Saudi Arabia. If you're looking for trade promotion and um, uh, business opportunities in Saudi Arabia. This is the job that we are set to do here in market. Um, I must say that this is a, a great uh, opportunity. This webinar, and I'm, I'm grateful for everybody who have contributed to it, but this webinar have brought in you. And uh, it's amazing uh, to see a wide diversity of Australian technology suppliers, investment firms, and um, including also customers from the whole region, not just from Saudi Arabia. I have seen uh, registrations from Egypt, from Morocco, from um, Jordan. So there are tremendous amount of interest in the sector in the whole region. So we are here to help. This is these are my contact details together with my colleagues. I cannot emphasize the um, uh, appreciation and thanks to Yazid, the team from Moan, the whole team from Moan to bring this to reality and uh, disclose the amount of opportunity in this sector. I'm also grateful for my colleagues all over the network inshore, onshore and offshore and uh, the marketing team of Australia. Having said that, I, I, leave, uh, 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 I think that is a, a great closure at this moment. And um, thank you, everyone. And really so, looking forward to hear from you. So, Mossam, there's Talk. just one last question that you could probably answer. So, a really good question from Andrew just then was, what are the next steps after this webinar today? What would you yeah, no, that's the next it. steps for people that are interested? Uh, that's exactly what I had just addressed, uh, Todd. Uh, one of the, I mean, we are looking at various uh, steps. Um, looking at, uh, of course, the ultimate objective from this webinar is to keep the momentum with Moan and other um, uh, parties in the region to visit Australia and have a look 
uh, what's happening. One of the things that we are also looking for, and you will hear from us, is also setting a roadshow with uh, participants from Australia providing their technology. You will hear from us about the plans and uh, terms and conditions to participate in such a roadshow in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and we are also looking to a few more webinar sessions with and, and perhaps roundtable discussions virtual or in person uh, with key stakeholders, businesses to bring together and sit around the table to get acquainted and know what, what's in the bag of each other. That's it, Excellent. I think. Thanks, Mossam. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great afternoon, evening, and the rest of your day. Thank you again, Wazid. Thanks to Pretty Badam, our marketing guru uh, from the Middle East region, and uh, have a great day. We look forward to working with you all. Thank you.